chemistry. It's a fang-bangled word. And a lot of people think that chemistry is restricted only to science laboratories. However, chemistry happens every day. It happens at school. It happens at home. It happens everywhere. <clears throat> and today we're about to embark on a quest. We're going to discover something that has been plaguing minds for eons. Well, that might be a bit of an exaggeration, but it has had me puzzled today. What makes fizzy drink fizz? A fizzy maker. <laughs> Baker, take it. Heaps of sugar would make it fizz. The bubbles. Baraka. Because <laughs> the people at the factory put the bubbles in and then they put the fizz in. There's a whole lot of burps if you shake a fizzy drink. <laughs> it makes a bubble inside and when you open it, it just bubbles. Like, if you put fizzy things into other fizzy things, putting special oil in it, then that now the special ingredients, mineral water. Shake them up. Just the sugar, probably. Let's take a step back in time. In 1772, a man by the name of Joseph Priestley was admitted to the French Academy of Sciences for inventing, would you believe it, soda water? Soda water is still being made today in the same way, however they're using trademark flavourings and such. It's hard to believe that soda water, fizzy drink, has been around for over 200 years. It was such a luxury back then. That's enough of a history lesson for one day. Now on to the fun part. The bubbles inside carbonated drinks, fizzy drinks like these ones here, are composed of carbon dioxide gas. And when the drinks are manufactured, that carbon dioxide gas is compressed into the bottles before the bottles are capped. At the right pressure, carbon dioxide gas seems to disappear. It dissolves into the soda. And you're probably creating carbon dioxide right now. Humans and animals exhale carbon dioxide. I'll show you. <gasps> See? Carbon dioxide gas. Oh, you can't actually see carbon dioxide gas, but believe me, it is there. A simple way of showing how carbon dioxide gets into water is this. Take one glass of water and one straw. And the fun part. You don't suck through the straw, you blow. Now, I know Mum and Dad often say, don't blow through the straw, but you've got a legitimate reason. It's all in the aid of science. So while you're blowing, watch the bubbles. This is a similar process to how they get the real bubbles into soda. Oh, not with someone blowing into a straw, but with a special machine that puts the carbon dioxide in under really high pressure. Hey, have you noticed when you open a bottle of fizzy drink, it makes this sound? Sort of a sound? Well, that's the carbon dioxide escaping. When it's put into the water, it's put in at such high pressure that the water and carbon dioxide join together like this. It has to stay under that high pressure. Or when you open the fizzy bottle lid, the carbon dioxide starts to escape. Psh, out like that. And that's what happens to your fizzy drink when it goes flat. Too much carbon dioxide has escaped. Now, you may well be wondering why I'm getting dressed like this. Well, I want to show you just how excited carbon dioxide gets under pressure. Boy, does it get excited. Have you ever dropped a can of fizzy drink and then opened it up? And it goes... Well, that's the soda. The molecules of the soda are crashing about much faster than they normally move and they keep bumping into the carbon dioxide molecules. The carbon dioxide doesn't like that. 
and it wants to get out of the bottle really fast. So it does. Shall we try it? Why not? Yes, you might like to move back, please. And remember, leave this to the experts. OK, here goes nothing. All in the aid of science, they say. I'm going to make my own fizzy drink. I've got a litre of water and some food colouring and some caster sugar, some baking soda and some lemon juice. And first of all, I'll start with a wee bit of this food colouring. Just a couple of drops. <sighs> Raspberry flavoured. Then the caster sugar. To add a little bit of sweetness. baking soda. This will help with the fizz. And last but not least, lemon juice. Give it a good stir. And voila! You might even be able to hear the bubbles. That's the lemon juice and the baking soda creating carbon dioxide. My own fizzy drink. Cheers. With the power of fizz, I'm going to expand this bag. Let me show you how I'll do it. I've got some baking soda, some vinegar and some warm water. I need to take a square of this paper here, paper towel, and put oh, about a tablespoon and a half of baking soda into the middle of it. The paper towel will be a time capsule. Fold it and give it a twist to hold it all in place. Like that. And then prepare the snap lock bag. You put half a cup of vinegar into a quarter of a cup of warm water and carefully pour that into the bag. Then the tricky part. Close the bag a little bit because once you put your time capsule inside, you need to lock the bag properly, then get out of the way. OK, one expanding bag coming up. <laughs> See how it's expanded? It's big and puffy, just like a cushion. Wouldn't want to lie on it, though. And that, my friends, is the power of fizz. <coughs> Excuse me. If you'd like to check out some more science info, head to my website. It's at www.suzy.co.nz or head to your local library. I'll see you soon. Ka kite. To the French <laughs> You get that off. Oh, thank you very much. Off. <laughs> Three. Oh, hang on, I've got to get my smile off. <laughs> oh, exactly, hang on, but I mean, that's a silly smile. Thanks for paying your broadcasting fee.